When we talk about the efforts to overturn the 2020 election, we understandably focus on the perpetrators, the people responsible, Donald Trump and a web of his underlings who try to subvert the will of the voters, the will of the American public. And that's especially true right now as we await an indictment in that case and comb through all the details. But as we follow the many threads of this enormous investigation, what often falls through the cracks are the victims that Trump left in his wake as he attempted to cling to power. And there are many. For starters, those victims include the American people. Trump attempted to disenfranchise more than 13 million voters who cast their ballots for Joe Biden in the seven states that he and his allies tried to overturn. Had that effort succeeded, even in part, Trump would have essentially invalidated the 81 million votes Biden received across the country, which, by the way, is more than any candidate had ever received in American history. Then there's President Joe Biden himself, who, despite the facts, may always be viewed by Trump's followers as illegitimate. According to a Monmouth poll conducted in May, two-thirds of Republicans still believe the falsehood that Joe Biden only won because of voter fraud. And that number hasn't changed much in the last three years, despite how much we talk about this. The victims of Trump's scheme also include countless election workers and officials who have been subjected to harassment campaigns and death threats just for doing their jobs. Ruby Freeman was an election worker in Georgia who was forced to pack up and leave her home of 20 years due to repeated threats on her life. But she and her daughter, Shea Moss, testified before the January 6th committee about the damage all of those lies caused them. I've lost my reputation. I've lost my sense of security. All because a group of people, starting with number 45 and his ally, Rudy Giuliani, decided to scapegoat me and my daughter, Shay, to push their own lies about how the presidential election was stolen. Don't do nothing anymore. I don't want to go anywhere. I second guess. Everything that I do, um, it's affecting my life in a, in a major way, in every way, all because of lies. All because of lies. And just this week, Rudy Giuliani admitted that the statements he made about Ms. Freeman and Ms. Moss were, in fact, false. You could also argue that the Republican Party itself was a victim of Trump's scheme to overturn the election. In the 2022 midterms, almost every Republican in battleground states who denied or questioned the results of the 2020 election lost. Then, of course, there were the victims of the violent insurrection at the Capitol on January 6th. That includes the actual targets of the attack that day, every sitting member of Congress and members of their staff, as well as Donald Trump's own vice president, who came within feet of a mob that wanted to hang him. But it was the Capitol Police, Metropolitan Police, and other law enforcement officers who suffered the most direct and severe physical harm at the hands of the MAGA insurrectionists. As the dramatic and disturbing body camera footage from that day shows, they were forced to engage in literal hand-to-hand -hand combat. They were attacked with bats, clubs, pepper spray, even flagpoles and a fire extinguisher. They were stabbed, stomped, and pushed down stairs. They suffered concussions, cracked ribs, and shattered spines. One lost an eye and five of those officers died in the days and weeks following the attack. One January 6th defendant who was just sentenced to four years in prison was caught on camera that day saying this, quote, death is the only remedy for what's in the Capitol building. For every single one of those Capitol law enforcement officers, death is the remedy. That is the only remedy they get. That is what all of those men and women in uniform were facing that day. So despite what Donald Trump says on the campaign trail and wants his followers to believe, it's important to remember that he is not the victim here. The victims are the institutions, the people, and the very foundations that have helped sustain our democracy for over 240 years. And Trump's lies about the election remain a threat as long as people in power choose to use them for political advantage.